Okay, this is the solutions to the final exam practice, part two. Chi-square. All right, number one, I'm asking you to find chi-square right. Sample size is given to us is 21. Right away, I find degrees of freedom. 21 minus 1 is 20. We're looking for a 90% confidence interval. What I've done here is very similar to the video. Alpha is 1 minus the confidence uh, interval. All right, 1 minus 90% is 0 0.9, 0 0.90. That's the difference is 0 0.10 shared equally amongst the right-hand side and the left-hand smidgen with 90% in the middle. Uh, half of 0 0.10 is 0 0.05. 0 0.05 to the right and 0 0.05 to the left. Here we just ask for chi squared right. I like chi squared right. I like labeling it as chi squared alpha over 2, all right, which is 0 0.05. So I'm looking for on my chart, my chi squared chart is across the top row, 0 0.05. Degrees of freedom is 20, and where these two, where this row, this column, excuse me, in this row intersect, I'm reading 31.410 chi squared right. Number two, I asked to find chi squared right once again. Sample size this time is 19. Degrees of freedom is 1 minus that 18. We're looking for a 99% confidence level. So my alpha is 1 minus 0.99, 99%, which is 0 0.01. Half of 0 0.01 is 0 0.005, 0 0.005. 0 0.005, the smidgen to the right and also to the left, but I'm just concerned with this one here. Um, looking at my table, 0 0.005 across the uh, top row, and where that intersects with 18 degrees of freedom. I'm reading 37.156 for chi squared right, and there I see it. These here will be spot on, all right? Spot on. There won't be any discrepancy. If you're not reading the right number, then if you're not seeing the correct answer, then obviously you've either not subtracted one from the sample size using the wrong degrees of freedom, or just maybe you just got the wrong roll and wrong table. I would suggest maybe bring a ruler where you can kind of line things up. You don't want to make a careless mistake. I don't want to make any mistakes, actually. Number three, we switch up looking for chi squared left. Degrees of freedom is one less than the sample size. One less than nine is eight. 90 degree confidence level. So my alpha is one minus 0 0.90, 0 0.10. Half of that is 0 0.05. The smidgen to the right here in pink, I guess it is, or red, and also here. But now with chi squared left, notice what I did. I labeled this 1 minus alpha over 2, all right? Alpha over 2 is 0 0.05. If this area here is 0 0.05, it's a right-hand table. From here all the way to the right is 1 minus this smidgen of 0 0.05, or you could say it's 0 0.90 plus 0 0.05. In either case, You've got an area, you've got a chi squared 1 minus alpha over 2 of 0.95. All right, so seeing where 0.95 intersects with 8 degrees of freedom, you're reading 2.733. Here again, without drawing the curve, it's so important to just catch this out. I don't see a, a situation where you could be doing this without actually drawing your, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a, a curve that's, it could be a bell-shaped curve. Even though the chi squared distribution is not symmetric, but you need to you need to have a picture of your curve so you know what this area here is and that area there and following. All right, so you can actually obviously download this prior to the exam where you've got you've got a a blueprint of how these guys are done. Number four, asking you for chi squared left again. Degrees of freedom is one less than twenty two. The sample size. Uh, 22 minus 121, we're looking for a 98-degree confidence, 90% confidence level. So my alpha is 1 minus 0 0.98, 0 0.02, shared equally. Half of that is 0 0.01 to the right and 0 0.01 to the left. Now, being a left-handed table, the area from here all the way to the end is 1, one whole, the area on the entire curve, minus this little area of 0 0.01. All right, which is alpha over 2. Notice 1 minus alpha over 2.99. 0.99.
All right, so matching up 0.99 with 21 degrees of freedom, you read 8.897. Um, and uh, for some reason, I didn't put it. I should have labeled it there. But I did not. But you see uh, 8.897 letter A. All right, now we switch up. And I'm looking for the entire confidence interval. And there is the formula right here. Square root of n minus 1 times s squared divided by chi squared to the right. Notice this is on the left-hand side, but you're dividing by chi squared right, which is the bigger number. So we do the division. This comes out to be a smaller number than the chi squared dividing by chi squared left here. In either case, you got to go through the same process. you got to find chi squared right and chi squared left. If you're looking for a 90-degree confidence level, 1 minus 0.90 is 0 0.10. Half of that is 0 0.05. To the right and to the left here. This is the easiest one to find, 0 0.05. And we're looking at, what, 13 degrees of freedom because n was uh, 14. Here's a case where it gives me x bar. x bar is, doesn't play anything in solving this problem. And why they give you x bar is beyond me. I'm just hoping perhaps you make a mistake. And just use this instead of your S, which is just standard deviation of the um, of the sample. But in either case, 0 0.05 matching up with 13 degrees of freedom, I read 22.362. If this area here is 0 0.05, from here all the way to the right is 1 minus 0 0.05 or 0 0.95. Notice I had labeled this alpha. It's chi squared 1 minus alpha over 2.95. 0.95 matched up with 13 degrees of freedom. There I am. I'm reading it as 5.892. But we're only halfway done. All right. We need the entire confidence interval. So I started out with a formula. It's n minus 1 degrees of freedom times my standard deviation, which was given to me up here as 13.8. All right. I'm squaring that according to the formula and dividing it by chi squared right of 22.362. And it comes out to be 10.5. Now, notice how I decided to have my calculator, my float set to one place, is that I looked at all my answers. Prior to doing the problem, I saw that all my answers were correct to one decimal place. So I had my calculator, my float set to one. Now, 10.5, as I look at this, there's only one answer, letter B, that had a lower limit of 10.5. Theoretically, I'm done. All right. But I went ahead and did the... Um, the upper limit here, I took my sample, my degrees of freedom times my standard deviation squared divided by my chi-squared left score of 5.892, and I came up with 20.5. But, you know, there's only one answer that had 10.5, so, you know, in essence, I was finished. I didn't have to do the, uh, the lower limit. Here we're presented number six with a 95% uh, confidence level, and is 22 X bar plays nothing in the problem. My standard deviation of my sample is 0.31. Degrees of freedom is 1 less than 22 or 21. All right, so my alpha is 1 minus 0.95. 95 degrees is 0 0.05. Cutting that in half. Cutting that in half, I got 0 0.025 to my right and also to my left. You see it labeled here. This is the easiest one. I go right to my table, look for 0 0.025. Matching up with 21 degrees of freedom, I'm reading 35.479. And to find this value here from here to the very end, if this point, this area here is 0 0.025, from here to my right all the way is 1 minus that of 0 0.975. Now what I didn't do is, here's my 0 0.975, I should have put that in yellow doubt. But 0.975 matched up with 21 degrees of freedom. They intersect right here at 10.283. And now i got to use both these numbers in my formula. I'm going to do my lower limit first, divide my, which is uh, n minus 1, my degrees of freedom, 21, times my standard deviation, which is given to me, formula says me to square that, and divide it by chi squared right, which here it is, 35.479. The table gave me that. Now, here, i got to correct it two places. Why? Because all my answers were corrected two places. Unlike the previous one, I see two answers that have point, uh, two, four. All right, letter B and letter D. So I've got to definitely do my, um, my, up, my lower limit here, 
which is my n minus 1, still 21. My standard deviation of my sample is still 0.31. I'm squaring that, and I'm dividing it by chi squared to the left, which is 10.283, and it comes out to my uh, calculator nicely returns 0.44. And there I see it, 0.24 on the low end, 0.44. I'm sorry, 0 0.24 to the low end, 0.44 on the high end. All right, there's a case where I had two answers here that were 0.24, so I had to do the other, the lower limit. Number seven, just to repeat here, we got a 98% confidence level, um, and it's nine, if four degrees of freedom is one less than that eight. My uh, standard deviation is given to me as 865. All right, so one minus 0.98, my alpha is 0 0.02, half of that. Is 0 0.01 to my right and 0 0.01 here to the left. Going to my table, 0 0.01 matching up with 8 degrees of freedom. I read 20.090. If this is 0 0.01, from here to my right is one whole area under the entire circle, circle, the entire curve, minus the smidgen. Gives me my chi squared 1 minus alpha over 2 is... Um, well, if I go to my table, 0.99, we've matched up with 8 degrees of freedom here. All right, I'm reading 1.646. Now you take both of these and plug them into my formula. I'll do my lower limit first. N minus 1 degrees of freedom is 8. 865 is my standard deviation. I'm squaring that. The formula says dividing by chi squared right of 20.090. I get 546. Notice correct to the nearest whole number. Why? Because I saw all my answers. Didn't have any decimals. Here's one where I got 546. I only see one answer that has the lower limit of 5, lower bound of 546. I'm done. But I went ahead and did the other one just to make, well, I don't know why, but <laughs> trust yourself, all right? All right, so the lower limit here, excuse me, the upper limit, N minus 1, 8, Standard deviation squared divided by chi squared left of 1.646. I'm reading 1907. And there it is spot on. I can't stress enough. Look at your answers. If the answers have one decimal place, set your flow. Go to mode, set your flow to one decimal place. If your answers have three decimal places or two, you don't want to have to spend time rounding off. All right, cause a lot of these answers are fairly close, but if you get the float set to the correct number of places, your answer, your calculator gives you returns, will match up exactly to one of the answers on the on the exam. All right, reading this problem with 20 machines as my end value, we're looking for, uh, it tells me my standard deviation is 2.7. All right, um... Why he's giving you the mean is beyond me. He's just trying to confuse you. The mean doesn't play any part in this. All right, 99% confidence level. So my my alpha um, <laughs> would be 1 minus 0.99. All right. 1 minus my confidence level, 0 0.01. Half of that is 0 0.005. This area to the right is 0 0.05, and that area there to the left is 0 0.05. Matching up 0 0.005 with 19 degrees of freedom. I'm reading 38.582 right there. From here to my right, if this area is 0 0.005, from here to my right is 1 minus that 0 0.995. I should have labeled that right there. All right, 0 0.995 matched up with 19 degrees of freedom. 6.844, taking those values and plugging into my formula. I'm doing my chi squared right here, right? My lower limit, there's my degrees of freedom, 19. There's my standard deviation squared, divided by chi squared right. Here again, I got one decimal place. Why? Because all my answers had one decimal place. Here's a case where letter C has 1.9, letter D. So I have to do uh, my upper limit. All right, so here it is, n minus 1, 19. There's my standard deviation squared, divided by chi squared left, 6.844. And my calculator returns 4.5, and there it is. Correct to one decimal place. I looked at my answer before 
I started using my calculator. I wanted my calculator to have the exact same amount of places. You don't want to have to round off on your own and make a careless mistake. And that is it. I hope that's um hope that helps.